Hello, are you out there? I'm Mark with Homebrew Fever Dream, and I've just been sneezing. So, <laughs> I just DM my first D&D session a few days ago. It was unbearable. That sounds bad. I want to read this just because of the title. This is coming from A.A. Ironwood. On mobile, quarter asleep while writing, so please forgive any mistakes. Yeah, uh, forgive my, my reading mistakes, please. <laughs> A few days ago, I got to DM for the very first time at my sister's boyfriend's house, and oh my goddess, was it mentally draining experience. What's more, there was a ton of buildup for it. I was hyped to DM for a group of friends who haven't played D&D before, but were open to trying it out. Okay. I'm guessing you... No, you're... Have you DM? New players, are you a new DM? We're just new to D&D? First D&D. Oh boy. Okay, let's keep going. <laughs> As already like bells and whistles. Buckle up because this is going to be a very frustrating ride. <sighs> Here's the cast. <sighs> I'm already bummed for you because if if you're all new to D&D, that's really tough because you're kind of learning the game together. There's no easy way to do that without a, a player coming. I mean, it can be done, but it's a challenge no matter what. So, me, me. You, uh, Stacy, my sister, Chaz, my sister's boyfriend, and the problem player of the story. Mitch, an insecure but really friendly guy. Blake, Mitch's brother, also a very chill and friendly guy. Dale, a big outdoorsy fellow with previous experience playing Pathfinder. Okay, so one of you at least has roleplay experience. I would hope you have roleplay experience, uh, OP, as the DM. See? Part 1, all that build up for nothing. Before the session actually began, I had been meeting up with this new friend group of mine on an almost weekly basis. During that time, I got everyone into the idea of giving D&D a try, offering to DM for them, and the general consensus was a tentative but curious yes. Over a month went by, and as it did, I helped my friends create their characters, which was a really fun process. Dale already had a character concept going in. This is the Pathfinder guy. Which got me even more excited for the main event when I tr eventually arrived, when it eventually arrived. However, with some subtle red flags would begin rearing their ugly heads as I began doing brief RP sessions with a few of the aspiring new players. Okay, but that's not a bad idea though, doing like little one-on-ones just to every get everyone sort of you know learning the basics of the rules and a little practice in making their characters that's that's a great idea see these matchups all took place at chaz's house and chaz is quirky to say the least he always gives his two cents about topics he knows literally nothing about argues about ancient mythology based on movies rather than the actual myths makes random comments out of the blue like i shit myself last <laughs> i shit myself last night for example, <laughs> among other things, he also has a generally irresponsible demeanor, but that's a whole other can of worms I'd rather not get into here. But you did. That's not roleplay-based stuff. You're just saying that's his personality. It sounds like Chaz all, like Chaz's personality outside of roleplay in D&D rubs you a little bit the wrong way. Is, yeah, I mean, you're bringing it up. It's a whole paragraph about Chaz that's unrelated to your D&D. Your &D. Okay. His demeanor during these test RP sessions raised a few eyebrows for me. For starters, his random nonsense comments continued, interrupting the descriptions of locations and the dialogues of NPCs. He would also frequently go off on tangents about the possible results of every single interaction, even when the NPC simply asked for his name. Okay. So he's, wow, he's, he's like an overpowering personality at the table. I, I mean, we've all seen that. Um, God, I'm trying to think of I've been that. I ch usually try not to interrupt the DM and stuff. I, I know some people at, at the tables are talkers more than others, and they're more boisterous. They try and crack jokes. But I could definitely see it being overdone. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's a fine line for for certain, and you don't want to be the spotlight hog. No one wants that. So let's keep going. His demeanor, raise a few eyebrows, freely in his name. Okay. However, that's all nothing compared to his treatment of Mitch, one of our friends. Mitch is not a very bold or outspoken person at all. It 
made role playing difficult for him. However, I was fully prepared to let him take his time and give him help with getting into character. That was absolutely not for what I was absolutely not prepared for was Chaz speaking for him in almost all of these interactions, boasting about his bard's 18 charisma as if it were all that mattered when it came to in-game social interactions. In short, he never let Mitch say a goddamn thing when it came to chatting with NPCs. That is bad, but Chaz and Mitch know each other. What, is it possible that Mitch said to Chaz in the lead-up to this saying, I don't really know if I'm into the role-playing thing. I'm not sure if I'm comfortable doing that. And Chaz was just like, oh, don't worry, I'll, I'll have my character be the leader, the face of the party, and, and speak up for you. I don't know, but that's a conversation between sessions you probably need to have with Mitch and or with Chaz and find out what's going on with that dynamic. Otherwise saying just casually like, hey, I, you know, it, it, the game runs better if everyone does their own role playing. So, you know, can we make sure that everyone's getting their spotlight? How are you guys doing this? It just seemed odd to me. Right, and let them do the answer, so you're not having to point fingers and be the scolder. Right, you could say what your expectation is or what you think would work best, but really let the two of them explain the situation. It might be a good way to call out Chaz a little bit, but it also might let Mitch say that's kind of by design what we've been doing. I I don't know, I don't know. All right, Chaz would also talk over people, including me, making it almost impossible to progress any scene. Okay, that's... Sometimes you just have to be like, I, man, you keep interrupting me. Can I get this sentence out? Please, I'm not mad. It's just, you're, you're slowing down my flow here. I'm trying, you know, this is hard for me. Right? Do it that way. There again, you're not, it's not about like bopping Chaz on the note. It's just like, say, I need help. It's really hard for me. I'm trying to role play and you keep interrupting me, man. Please, I'm, I'm just trying to get... Get this out. I've got a lot of balls I'm juggling to be the DM, I'm, and I'm new to it. So would you help me with this, right? That, that's a just hope. I, and maybe that'll blow up in your face. I'm not. Maybe maybe my idea is like, oh, this is the smooth way you negotiate and calm. Maybe that wouldn't work at all. But to me, you always want to ask the other person to do the right thing, right, for your sake, and just being like. This isn't a problem because of you. It's a problem because I need help. I'm new to this. It's challenging for me, right? That kind of puppy dog eye sort of thing. That might be the right way to do it. Because Chaz clearly is doing this because Chaz thinks he's hilarious. I think we all get that. We all know Chaz's, right? Listen, when I was younger, you know, roll back the clock to when I was 20 or something, I was a loud mouth, no doubt. I would, I would say, I would be, I was probably a loud, no, I was a loud mouth, and, and I was outlandish, and all that stuff. I mean, you guys, if you watch my, my little things here, right, the alt army that watches this, you probably know I'm, I'm pretty outgoing and boisterous, but I was a nightmare, yeah, shit, when I was 14, I'd bug my older sister, her, her girlfriends would come over, the pretty, pretty girls in my house, I was obnoxious as F, and she has just sounds like he's a grown man who's still obnoxious as death. But maybe he's not that old, right? Chaz thinks he's doing a great job. You just need to be like, man, I need, I need your help. L let's make this fun for everyone, you know? Like, it's like, I love the energy, cracking the joke occasionally, but, but make, you know, read, read everyone else. If some people are trying to get into the role play, don't joke over them, please. It, 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 in me as well, when I'm trying to get out the content, the story. Huh. Try that. Okay, part two, you had one job. As the chosen date of our D&D session approached, I was getting as prepared as I possibly could to make it a night to remember. I bought miniatures, grabbed some of my own dice sets for the players to use, packed up my DM screen, and made sure D&D Beyond was up to date. Awesome. It sounds like you're, you're going to bring a great game to the table. Dale, however, was quite pre well prepared. Dale, how Dale, Dale, however, was quite well prepared. As previously mentioned, he had already had a character concept to work with and a miniature to use. As such, I asked the only person I could readily contact to let Dale know to make his character sheet and bring his mini because game night was just around the corner. Okay, you didn't have a way to reach Dale? 
The only person I could really contact was Chaz, because fuck my life. Okay, I will take your word for it. You stated twice that this was the only practical way to reach out to to Dale. I'm surprised Dale didn't know when you were when the session was. I You guys decided on the session without Dale. Like just some of you decided and then it was like, okay, disseminate the information to others. Hey, pro tip to anyone out there in your D and D group, have one or two ways to meet your to contact your friends on your Discord server, uh, through messages on Roll20, through email, through text, face-to-face. Uh, -face. Come on. You, <laughs> you guys are all adults, I assume? Yeah, Chaz forgot to tell Dale any of this, so when game night arrived, the poor guy had no mini and no character sheet. So he had to hastily write one up with a fucking Crayola pencil. It was a haphazard mess, and I wasn't even able to write down all his class features and spells. So Dale didn't even have a proper arsenal of abilities to use. That sucks. That sucks for Dale. Chaz's irresponsible and seemingly oblivious nature has compromised our ability to play the game. But I knew that with all five of my players there, he wouldn't be able to dominate the table like he had the preparatory RP sessions when it was just one or two of you. Yep, nope. That's not right. <laughs> Chaz does dominate everything. <laughs> Part three. Shut up! We began, and Chaz would not shut his big mouth. This is long. This is, this is a long one. Yeah, okay, we'll keep going. I asked Stacy how her character responds to the gruff mercenary recruiting them. Chaz is making quips. Dale and Blake are having an RP moment where they improvise a shared history. Chaz is ignoring that as he talks about something else. A godlike wizard is hiring them for a quest. Nobody can ask their questions because Chaz is going on and on and on about how high his character's fucking charisma is. The fight begins. I have to remind him every round that, as a spellcaster, he can't cast spells. <sighs> Sounds like Chaz is a problem player. But there again, you, got, you just talk about this. Even in the moment, even an hour into a session, you can be like, guys, guys, whoa, whoa. We, they're talking. We can't be talking over each other, okay? That's a table rule. I'm making it right now. Our first session, table rules. If someone else is talking, please don't interrupt. You don't even have to target Chaz with that. You just say it to everyone because you got two people role playing and Chaz talks over, so there's like three people going, or you and another player are role playing and Chaz talks in, so now there's three people. So you can just be like, whoa, 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 guys, we're we're talking over each other. We we need to everyone please just let folks get it out before anyone else starts talking. Please. Common courtesy, right? You, you gotta do shit like that. But you don't even have to wait till the session's over. Just do that in the moment if things are getting crazy like that, okay? Yeah, that's how bad he was. He was also just assuming he could do certain things because he was basing his judgment on Skyrim rules, despite the fact that I told him numerous times that this has his own rules, and for him to ask me if he had any questions about them. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. The, the players are ultimately just supposed to tell the DM what they want to do, and the DM tells them how they can do it, what to roll. That's or, or if they can't do it. That's kind of how, how it's supposed to work in, in all role-playing games, essentially. The worst part of all this is that every player was doing great. Every other player was doing great. Dale had previously ex previous experience with Pathfinder, so it wasn't too su I wasn't too surprised he was a good role-player. But Blake had no prior experience, and he took to his character like a fish to water. Stacy even gave her fighter a delightfully funny, flat personality, making dry quips when appropriate. Mitch did fine, but again... Chaz talked for him, over him numerous times, so I didn't even get to see Mitch try to reach his own full potential. Well, and, and to be fair, this takes time, and Mitch reaching his full potential isn't something you're going to see in session one. Okay, because you're saying this is like your first session, and it was a nightmare. Oh, okay. Just... Breathe it down. I, I know this is fresh. This is like a day or two old. I'll, I'll, I'll DM you this OP here, so if you listen this far. It's not meant to all work right right away. It just isn't. You're all new to this? Don't even sweat it. it maybe after session three or session five, Mitch will get into his own, and everyone will calm down and, and learn the roles at the table and learn the chemistry at the table. You're making that. You do not have chemistry at the table now. You don't. There's no way you could. Even an experienced group has to form chemistry at the table over multiple sessions when they get going. You 
Don't even sweat that. Just give it time. Ultimately, all the good moments of that session were undercut by Chaz and his loud mouth. The guy just could not be this couldn't the guy just couldn't not be the center of attention, and it made it downright impossible to focus on anything that was happening. I wish I could DM for everyone else and just leave him out. But all our get together happens at his house, and my place is in no condition to host a D and D game in. Part four. Wow. We're, uh, get some TLDRs down here, hopefully. Okay. Part four. Better than bad D and D. No D and D. I've decided that it's not worth playing with the group if Chaz is going to keep being such an annoying and obnoxious cunt. I so desperately want to DM for everyone else, but if I continue doing so, Chaz's antics will cause it to stop being fun for me, and if the DM isn't having fun, the players will undoubtedly feel the ripple effects of it. I don't want to subject myself to Chaz, and I don't want to subject everyone else to the ripples he causes. After all, no D&D is better than bad D&D. I just don't know why my sister is with this fucking dumb skull. Oh, time out. He's down there. Your sister's personal life choices are her call. If you are not okay with Chad for your sister's behalf, and I'm not saying that's what you're saying, but it sounds like that's what you're saying, you got to let your sister live her life, man. Ooh, take it down a notch. I also get the distinct feeling that some of your issues with Chaz absolutely predate the D&D here. Let's focus on the D&D, though. So that's a little bit of dad advice to you. There's l let your sister be with her relationships. That's her life. And don't poison the well for her and her relationships, right? Support people, your family. They're going to make choices. You do not have to agree with them, but it's her life. Okay, secondly, don't give up on this. Part of role-playing, whether you're a player or the DM, is having patience with the people around you. You will not all at every session over the months and the years that you role play with people get along perfectly people will not always shine and have their best moments session after session you will fall down as the dm players will fall down as players on occasion and certainly talking this stuff through is all part of it i don't know where you learned about dnd &D, but it's not a tv show where everyone just gets along because it's their job <laughs> Okay, I, <laughs> that's a little, you know, dig at some of the, the online D&D &D stuff. It's not really. It's, it's people seeing it and thinking that that's what it's supposed to be at the table. It's not. This is very normal what you're going through. This is extremely normal what you're going through. Chaz does not be, need to be driven out. Chaz just needs to get into the groove, mellow a bit, have a conversation, and learn to have, let it sh make sure everyone else is having fun along with the fun Chaz is clearly having. Like, this is Chaz's best moment. Chaz is shining, in his own mind at least. He's in his element. But you need to be like, whoa, whoa, you, you over there, let's take it down a bit. You, you over there, let's bring it up a bit. Okay, you come in here, you're going to go here, and, th and there we go. We've made a, a, a table. We've made a role-play group. But it doesn't happen on session one. And if you don't have the, the mental, emotional to roll with this and to be the referee and to problem solve and be the director then you don't got what it takes to be a DM I'll be real honest OP it's a skill that you have to practice if you aren't really good at it or you have to learn if you don't know it at all it's one of those two so yes Chaz does need to bring it down Chaz needs to be making sure everyone's having fun including you DM but running Chaz off after one session, no. I always say you give everyone two or three sessions where you have talk about the problem. If they can't make the change, then you push them out to the side. But you haven't even tried to correct the problem yet, so it is not appropriate to drive Chaz off. And you may come to like Chaz a lot more as you get to know him for real. I don't know how, much, how well you know him, but I think Chaz can adjust. I think you can adjust, and I think you have the potential to have a great table. But it ain't going to happen on session one, sister. That's just all there is to it. All right, let's get back to it. TLDR, time in. My sister's boyfriend forgot to send crucial information to another player. Should have never been on him to do that, but you know, resulting in that player having no mini and a rush character sheet. Again, not Chaz's issue that happened. Also constantly talks over everyone else, including me, the DM. That is a problem. 
simply yourself and the other players have a conversation as a group. You don't even have to target Chaz. You just say, hey, everyone needs to take their turn. Don't talk when someone else is talking so that everyone feels comfortable and feels like they have the time and the room to role play. That's a general conversation. It doesn't have to target Chaz. Edit. I just wanted to clear up a few things people have asked or mentioned in the comments. Copied and, and pasted from my response to another comment. Okay. First, I have Dale and Blake's contact info, but I didn't want to come across as pushy. A stupid mistake in hindsight. Yeah, you're the DM. You're the captain of this ship, so you need to be in contact with all your players. Second, I asked Dale long before the session if he wanted help with his sheet, and he said he was fine. Apparently, this was not the case. But I can't be mad at him. Life was very busy for him. You don't need to be mad at anyone. It just, it just didn't work out in that case. It's a small, no MIDI, no character sheet is not that big of a deal, especially if Dale has already created a character in his own mind. It's just it's a small thing. His mini can be a gumdrop. Okay? <laughs> Whew. Third? Yeah, I probably should have just moved it to the next week, but everyone else was all ready to go with it, and I didn't want to disappoint. No, you shouldn't have moved it to the next week. Did someone suggest that in the comments? Why? You would never postpone a, a session for one person, unless that person is the DM. And even then, I would say, all right, guys, get together anyway and play board games without me. Or one of you pick up another little, you know, pick up a Monster of the Week, simple role play, guys. Try it out. One of you guys get experience as the DM. One person should never cancel for a group. If it's a group of four, five, six people, yeah. That's, I, I call bullshit on that. You keep playing. Lastly, I ha no, I haven't talked to the rest of the group about it yet. See, I met everyone else because they were friends of Chaz long before I came along, and I met Chaz because my sister is dating him. They gladly accepted me into the group, but because Chaz is the guy who brought everyone together, he not only has longer-standing relationships with them, but also has some mild form of power over the group. Eh -eh. Listen, Chaz is their friend, and these people must see something in Chaz. You're new to the group, and they were welcoming to you, OP. You need to chill a little bit. You guys need to make your friend group together. That's on all of you to gel, okay? It just hasn't happened yet. Give it time. If I talk to them about it, I'm contesting with the guy they've known for much longer who seems to act with impunity when it comes to what he says and does around them. It just seems like an unwinnable situation for me. Whew. Hopefully this gives some added context. You're not trying to win. You're trying to play a game together, right? It's not, a, it's not a basketball game where it's the first person to get to 21 win by two. You, you're all trying to win together. You're all trying to have a good time together. Don't think about winning and losing. You ripping Chaz away from your sister and Chaz's friends? Oh, that is a, that's like a Maury Povich reality TV show. Don't, don't do that. Don't even attempt to go down that road. That road. I mean, yeah, walk, if you need to walk away from all the D&D &D stuff to not get into that drama, breaking apart relationships, friendships, don't. Don't. Ugh. Edit 2. Just talked with Blake about the situation. He actually agreed that Chaz has been more than a little distracting. He also agreed that talking to the other players about it and then asking Chaz to tone it down was the best course of action. I'm going to do that ASAP, so fingers crossed that he chills out next time we play. Yeah, ooh. Yes, you need to talk about it, but I would talk about it as a group. I wouldn't... Don't... This isn't an intervention. You're not going to get Chaz that way. His personality is too strong. The force is too strong in this one. And it's Chaz's friend group. And Chaz's girlfriend. Don't make this you against Chaz. Oof. <laughs> I got... You're not going to win that one. You guys need to have a calm table conversation. Again, hey everyone, let's make sure we're not talking over each other so that everyone feels comfortable and has the time in the room to do their own role play and express their character. Okay? We in agreement, is that a table rule, a house rule we're going to have? Yes, yes, yes. Awesome. Thanks. Good luck to you, OP. And if anyone watched, thank you. I appreciate it.